Good afternoon. I love how everybody responds. This is unusual in the world. You are unique uh, in this country for a response. Thank you. Thank you. So Abe's excellent presentation gave me the perfect lead-in to mine, because what I'm going to do today is go a little bit deeper into our psychology around making change. Um, before I do that, I'll give you a brief introduction to Apolitical, um, so you know what perspective I'm talking on about. Oh, no. Okay, one back if possible. And one forward. Ah, great. We're good. I'll, I'll, if you stand there, I'll ask for help when I next need it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, we often say that government is dealing with 21st century problems, with 20th century technology, and 19th century institutions. We're trying to put 21st century skills and knowledge at the fingertips of public servants. We pull together the collective wisdom of public servants around the world and turn that into learning, online convenings, connections to help every public servant anywhere innovate. We're used by 35,000 members in 160 countries rapidly growing. You'll be pleased to know that we are planning to be available in Portuguese early next year to really support the Brazilian market. And we have contributions from civil servants everywhere, from all levels of government, from the innovation team in Los Angeles to your own secretary of IT and communications. And the beady-eyed amongst you will also see Abe on this slide talking about free agents on the platform. So, we're here to talk about building skills um, and the competences of a civil service of the future. And in all conversations around this topic, it always comes down to, well, it's all about mindset and it's all about behavior. But what does that actually mean? So, in the next 15 minutes, I want to give you all the space to think about what your innovative mindset is, and change in the Brazilian public service starts here and now. In the next 15 minutes, we're going to ripple it out. Ambitious, I know, for 15 minutes, but we're at Innovation Week, so let's try. Okay? So, I'm going to give you two critical ingredients for building a mindset of the future. Um, it is humility, and agency, uh, basically admitting that you don't know everything, that's humility, and the second is still believing you can make a difference. And I'm going to give you three reasons why these are the critical ingredients. They've got to do with geezers, the Amazon, and great views. These are all clues to the reasons I'm going to tell you about. So the first reason. We're going to start off with a little quiz. So, a, a study was done about innovation approaches in the public sector. Do you get innovation when it's policy driven, like a top down change in budget or policy? Do you get it with a bottom up approach, where teams are encouraged to come up with new ideas? Um, or do you get it when you bring in external innovators to your department? Now, one amongst these three was proven to be markedly poorer than the other two. And I'm going to ask you to guess which one it is. So hands up if you think one was the worst. Nice and high, so I can see you. OK, about just under 50% of the room. Hands up if you think two was the worst. OK, a few hands, not many. Hands up if you think three was the worst. OK, three has the majority here. The answer is, in fact, one. But I'm glad that the room was split between one and three, because I'm going to say 
given three costs money in your organization and you're already paying salaries of the people in it, then you're best off opting for two. And what do people need in order to actually come up with good ideas? They need to know that their ideas are going to be valued up the chain. And that takes humility on the part of leaders to admit that they don't know everything and that better ideas might come from other places who may have less experience or may know less about the topic. Um, we've seen in companies uh, an active effort to try and reverse hierarchy because it is so psychologically ingrained in people to not disagree up the hierarchy. So, for example, there's a famous case of Gucci and Prada, both very well-known fashion companies, who um, were sort of neck to neck in 2014. And um, Prada in 2014 experienced a decline in sales, whereas Gucci experienced an increase. And the key reason they attribute that difference to was that Prada, uh, sorry, Gucci, um, employed a shadow board of young people that gave advice to the actual board, and that's why they caught on to digital marketing. Amazon um, has a number of practices to inverse this hierarchy, one of which is that at a meeting, everybody sits in silence for the first half an hour, reading the same memo so they can each formulate their own thoughts, and the boss speaks last. So, think to yourself, how are you inversing hierarchy in your organizations to actually encourage people to come up with good ideas and create a psychologically safe environment? When you do give that leeway, people who think they can make a difference will come up with great ideas. And we've seen these sorts of changes in public services around the world some of which were featured on Apolitical. So in Finland, um, they have really pushed on trying to drive a bottom-up experimental culture. Um, there are experimental what works teams being um, set up all over uh, government. So in Colombia, um, US, Canada, uh, France, um, Australia. Um, and Singapore has really gone hard on trying to encourage innovation by, um, and it doesn't require monetary incentives, it requires recognition. Um, so teams are encouraged to come up with ideas and good ideas get recognized and rewarded publicly. On to my second reason, another quiz. So imagine that you're, you've got a relay race, team one, consists of clones of the fastest sprinter on Earth. Team two consists of the second and third and fourth and fifth best runners. If you had a relay race amongst teams one and two, which team is going to do better? Hands up for team one. Okay, less than 50%. Hands up for team two. Okay, I would love to hear why you think it's team two, but the answer is indeed team one. So the, fa the, the, the fastest, if you have clones of the fastest sprinter, the team that, that is like five times the best sprinter is gonna win. Now take an example like economic prediction. Team one, again, consists of clones of the best economist. Team two consists of economists with different perspectives. If you take an average of the um, prediction of team one and team two, which team's prediction is gonna be closer to the truth? Hands up if you think it's team one. Hands up if you think it's team two. <laughs> right, 100% guys. Um, now, the reason these two situations are different is because economic prediction 
is a complex problem where one person, no matter how good they are, will not have the full picture. They cannot have the full picture. And so when you get a team that is cognitively diverse, in other words, they all will have a different blind spot. Collectively, their solution is going to be better than even what the single best individual could come up with. Now, I don't need to tell you which category policy falls into. It's not a sprint. It's a complex problem where it's impossible for one person to have the full picture. And that is why um, humble public servants who recognize that they will, by definition, have blind spots when it comes to policy, will seek diverse input into their solutions. Um, the funny thing is, when teams get together that think the same, it feels so good. Everybody agrees with each other, and people think they do really well. And in fact, the performance of those teams is worse than the performance of a cognitively different, uh, diverse team, even though it feels harder. So it really takes quite a lot of self-reflection um, and an active effort not to get, not to surround yourself by people who think like you. Um, this uh, example is taken from Matthew Syed's book, The Power of Diverse Thinking, which I highly recommend. And he even points to the fact that the CIA, the American CIA, who had one of the world's best recruitment process, um, hired very talented people, but hired talented people who all thought the same. And that contributed in part to their inability to properly interpret some of the warning signs in advance of the 9-11 attacks. This is a very high profile consequence of what can happen when you don't seek diverse input. So governments are doing this. Um, by building cross-functional teams, the UAE puts together these crisis teams, um, com pulling together people from different ministries to solve problems. And there's a huge effort to try and hire more diversity into government. Um, this actually is a platform that um, strips applications of um, uh, name uh, and CV even, and all a hiring manager initially does when they sift, sift ap applicants is look at their answers to skills-based questions, which are also mixed. Um, this is now being used um, in some government departments in the UK and Australia, for example. But seeking diverse input starts not only within your teams, um, it also applies um, to policy, um, so for example, uh, the, U the Australian International Development Agency is pioneering a new tool that measures poverty at an individual level rather than a household level because the disparity within households is actually quite large. And this disparity is n doesn't usually get um, measured. So again, seeking diverse input on the same problem by collecting relevant data. Um, and uh, lots of um, governments are creating ways for citizens to participate in policy making. Um, one of the most impressive is how um, uh, Australia has set up citizen juries which really deliberate an issue before giving an opinion to the extent that they manage to reverse plans for um, a nuclear waste dump being built, for example. The third, um, the third reason why humility and agency are your two ingredients for building a mindset of the future. Again, a quiz. So, a study was done about the individual traits that are most associated with innovative people. Um, I didn't choose these traits, they were in the study. So, agreeableness, conscientiousness, extroversion, openness to experience, and low emotional stability. 
um, which trait, hands up, which trait you think was shown to be the most associated with innovation? Hands up if you think it was one, agreeableness. Nobody. Hands up if you think it's two, conscientiousness. A few. Hands up if you think it's three, extroversion. A few more. Hands up if you think it's four, openness to experience. Pretty much the whole room. Okay, I'm not gonna bother with five. Um, so, you're absolutely right, very well informed crowd. It is number four. Um, and funnily enough, for the guys who raised their hands for conscientiousness, that was the trait that was shown to be the least associated with innovative thinking. <laughs> Um, that's not to say we shouldn't be conscientious, it was just, just of interest. But openness to experience comes hand in hand with openness to ideas, and that I associate with learning. Interestingly enough, we did um, at Apolitical, uh, we had a skills tracker allowing people to test how innovative they were um, using a personality test. Amongst the world's civil servants, the highest scoring, um, most people said they were kind of proactive and curious, and the people, the things that people felt they need the most help with was being persuasive, convincing their, their peers and their bosses for change, being experimental and being adaptable. So, humble public servants learn widely and cultivate that openness to new ideas. Um, very briefly, um, we did a survey of public servants around the world and how they learn. Um, more people use resources, find resources outside of work, which we found really interesting. They're very proactive. Um, public servants are putting aside time to learn uh, several times a week, which we thought was fascinating. Um, so you've got a really proactive bunch amongst you. Um, uh, ooh. And that, and, and, but it needed to be bite-sized. Um, and that's why Apolitical, we do bite-sized, peer-led, and engaging and inspiring learning. So, my question to you is, can you commit to operating with humility and agency? Raise your hand if you're in. Great, I chose the right crowd. Okay, for those of you who didn't raise your hand, you're at the wrong conference. Um, uh, and so I have two actions for everybody to take. Take out your phones. For those of you who are on the Wi-Fi, I know it's a bit dodgy. Um, firstly, do yourself a favor and put yourself on a route to continuous learning. This is what we're trying to do at Apolitical. We're making it easy for you to come across new ideas so you can continuously expand your horizons. If you're not comfortable reading in English, then you can sign up there, um, apolitical.co forward slash Portuguese hyphen 2020, and we'll let you know when we are available in Portuguese. Um, by the way, you're going to have to use a kind of LinkedIn or Twitter or your government email, and we'll, that'll allow us to vet you quickly um, because the platform is only open to public servants and government partners. The second action, and this is where the real experiment starts, is I want you on social media to express your commitment. Um, before I came, I didn't realize that Instagram was the social media platform of choice, so you can choose Twitter or Instagram depending on what you're on. Um, the reason I'm doing this is not just to be cheesy, it is based on science. If any of you have read Cass Sunstein's book, How Change Happens, he is the godfather of uh, behavioral economics in government. He points out that people don't know what other people think, really, and um, people won't say what they think until other people say it. And that's kind of why cultures don't really change. And when people start saying what they think, then stink things start happening. So we are 400 here, many more listening. If all of you honestly express how you plan to operate, you will be giving everybody who works with you license to also operate like this. So my request is, let's start this at the start of Innovation Week um, and get this culture change rolling across Brazilian government. Thank you.